You know, it, it really often the hospitals range in size from whether you're living in urban areas to whether you're living in rural areas where the hospitals can be quite small. And so, and whether they're specialized hospitals, like a lot of times a children's hospital is a separate hospital than the hospital where adults go. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, mainly we have hospitals and then specialized services and then they're often, if you want to seek, there are smaller yeah. doctor's yeah. clinics if people like personal care. There's even been a trend for home care recently. It's quite expensive, mm -hmm. but if you want a doctor to come to your house, mm -hmm. you have that option. Okay. Primary care, usually within, you know, a week or so. Okay. Specialized services like a mammogram sometimes huh? now can take, you know, a few weeks. So you need to have good planning. Okay. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Halo, apa kabar semuanya? Kembali lagi di podcast Yarsi Tempatnya sharing dan edukasi terkait berita terkini Perkenalkan, saya Gina selaku host pada pagi ini Dan kali ini saya nggak sendirian nih Saya bersama dengan Dr. Evan Dan pada pagi ini kita akan membahas topik yang sangat menarik Mengenai pelayanan kesehatan rumah sakit di Amerika Serikat Yeah. Halo Dr. Gina Dan hari ini kita juga sudah kedatangan dua orang tamu yang luar biasa ya Kita ada Prof. Chandra dan Miss Kendra Halo Miss Hello. Kendra, welcome to YRC Thank you, it's nice okay. to be here Ya, yeah, thank you So, hari ini kita akan ngobrol-ngobrol tentang healthcare nih teman-teman semua Dan kita kedatangan tamu yang udah luar biasa banget Ada Miss Kendra dari USAID uh, rumah, uh, Amerika Dan beliau juga sudah punya pengalaman di Indonesia Merasakan Uh, pelayanan kesehatan di kita dan nanti kita akan ngobrol-ngobrol ya tentang uh, bagaimana sih social insurance atau insurance-nya di Amerika gitu ya dokter Gina ya. Yeah. So kita sapa dulu tamu kita hari ini. Halo Miss Kendra, Hello. Prof Chandra. How are you today? Yeah, good and you? Yeah, yeah good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, teman-teman, uh, today we are diving into the world of healthcare. Yeah. Specifically uh, how it works and United States. Yes. So we already have our distinguished guest, Miss Kendra. So uh, let's start with the basics, Miss okay. Kendra. Uh, what types of health insurance are available in the U.S. and how does uh, someone choose uh, what's right uh, for them? Yes, that's mm -hmm. a good question mm -hmm. and sometimes complicated question. <laughs> um, we have a large number of health insurance options. Okay. Most are private sector uh, companies that have health insurance. And then, you know, through the Affordable Care Act, um, we have a sort of benefit that for people that can't afford to have health care uh, through their insurers, because most people in America, your job pays for your health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, but those are still all private company options. Um, so very little other than when you're older, Medicare and Medicaid mm -hmm. are targeted for elderly and poor people. But the vast majority of our insurance options are, for, are from the private sector. Um, so making a decision mm -hmm. on what's best for you is usually your employer will have options mm -hmm. sometimes. Sometimes they only have one <laughs> health okay. insurance and then you, you don't really have an option mm -hmm. Uh, unless you want to pay for it yourself. So you oh. always have the option that's very expensive to just pay for your own health insurance. Um, normally the factors for health insurance when you're choosing depends on if you have a family or not and how, how often you'll seek medical care. Um, Many insurance uh, rely on deductibles, mm -hmm. and so if you're healthy and you don't think you'll use insurance a lot, mm -hmm. uh, people aim for having a high deductible. Um, makes the overall insurance package cheaper um, because even when you get the insurance through your employer, often you have to pay a little bit each month as well. So sorry, what is deductible? Yeah, so deductible is that um, your insurance will only cover, if your deductible is $1,000, your insurance kicks in after the $1,000. Okay. So um, that's why if people don't go to the hospital much, they'll pick a high deductible. Mm. But if you know that you need medical services, people either aim for no deductible or very low okay. deductible. So that's the, the hardest part in a big factor in decision making for insurance. Um, and then usually it's uh, your doctors. You have to look and see certain hospitals don't take certain insurance. So the availability of your medical services and what insurance they'll accept is uh, is a big factor. And for dentistry, this has been a problem because um, a lot of 
dentist sometimes used to not take dental insurance. So dental oh. insurance is relatively new in the U.S. as being something that employers cover. Um, so going to the dentist could be quite expensive, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's getting a little better now with insurance. But um, choosing your dentist, you always want to make sure that they'll take your insurance because otherwise it's expensive. So it does it mean uh, all the American or U.S. Uh, citizens yes. have us? Uh, social insurance right now? Yeah, we do have social insurance um, that is covered through the Affordable Care Act. It, it does limit the number of private company options for people to choose, but it does provide insurance to people that would not get it under their employer benefits. So it's still relatively new, and because we're so decentralized, it works better in some states and not others, and it has really been dependent on the availability of the private sector cooperation with the government, um, which is sort of, you know, uh, has some improvement, I think, to, to, um, to be made in that. So we're still, I think Indonesia is actually further along <laughs> in universal health care coverage than in the U.S. Uh, it's still very much an experiment. <laughs> so, so, so you're talking about social insurance. Yeah. So there are social insurance and there are non-social insurance. Is that, yeah. is that correct? Could yeah. you so, elaborate more? On this? Yeah. yeah. So mainly our social insurance is Medicare and Medicaid. Mm, um, and that and is the, for? And, and so Medicare is for elderly people okay. that and are no longer working uh, and they will pay for, mm -hmm. for some coverage of, mm -hmm. of medical benefits. Medicaid is for very poor or okay. disabled people. If you qualify for that, mm -hmm. that gives you some funding for insurance. All of them are, you know, um, to use private hospitals. That, that okay, so those with. are the social insurance. Those are So the, the young people, I mean the, the non-elderly non and non- uh, uh, what is the other one? Oh yes, elderly disabled. Ah, yeah. so so non elderly and non disabled, yeah. they they will go to the but through the Affordable Care Act now. You yeah. can seek to get insurance okay. as well. So that's, so that's our that, third option. That's not a co that's not a social insurance, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, in a way, it's a social insurance, <laughs> but there okay. is there is a bit of a fee, and okay. it's, it's one of the newer sort of social insurances okay. that okay. Have, have been developed for the U.S. So Great. it's a yes. work, but yes. that's the third. Uh, and then there, if you're a veteran, the veteran mm. hospital services are always free for people that served in the in the military. Mm. So mm. that is, I guess, you know, another social insurance, okay. but limited only. Yeah, and also. So it's interesting that you said that that's dentistry is yeah. not covered. Yeah. So besides yeah. dentistry, is there another that's not covered by the... Yeah, you know, um, so depending on insurance, some specialized care may not be covered. Vision uh, is more recently something that's covered. Um, mm -hmm. There's been a lot of discussion about in vitro fertilization and reproductive okay. care. So okay. some insurances will cover things like that. Some insurances do not consider that essential. But but how about how about uh, kind of heart operation or yeah. ca cancer treatment? Which yes, those are usually covered, okay. but um, but not all the cancer. Sometimes this is a bit always um you know questionable if there's new therapies mm. they have to be approved by the insurance company so sometimes there are uh, types of treatments that a patient might want to seek that their insurance won't cover yeah yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think I already opened this podcast with a good question. <laughs> you did, yeah. So, so it's very complicated. I, I would say when you get the information on your insurance, it's a big book. It takes a lot of research. Okay. On your, on Thank your you, Ms. Kendra. <laughs> so if I'm injured yes. and start uh, feeling sick, yes. uh, uh, what's the process for getting medical treatment? Yeah. Is there a mandatory uh, flow that I have to uh, fill in uh, yeah. before? Yeah, so if you're not urgently sick, <laughs> normal process would be to call your doctor okay. and they'll make a referral to you. And then that way you know that your insurance Sorry, is... Sorry, call my doctor, my personal doctor? Yeah, you, or yeah you call your personal primary care physician. Oh, okay. So every insurance asks you to identify who that is um, so that you have that's your point of contact. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, if you don't need urgent care, you start with your doctor. Okay. Um, and if it's something specialized like your heart or, you know, they, you broke a leg, they'll send you to an orthopedist they'll make a referral for you and then when you go with their referral you know your insurance is going to cover it and you know where to go if it's urgent care you have a couple choices we have urgent care facilities um, that are not for serious emergencies that you can go to without an appointment you do often have to sit in a long line and and, and wait if it's a busy time or there's emergency care um, we try to discourage unless it's a real emergency to go into an emergency 
emergency room because they're quite they're quite crowded and it's the most expensive way <laughs> to get care. Um, but most people, if you can and it's not urgent, you start with your doctor because it's the best way to make sure that you're not going to end up with a cost that you don't want um, because you've done all the process first. So, so the, uh, pr our personal doctor or uh, the primary doctor, sorry. Yes. Yeah, the, the primary doctor will um, make a decision uh, to where, uh, what kind of uh, medical uh, facility. Yes. That, uh, I will yeah. go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so that could be frustrating for a lot of Americans. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. like to have that layer yeah. and loss of freedom. Um, you know, so you sometimes there are insurances that let you just make the decisions and go out of network. Mm -hmm. Those usually cost a bit more, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they allow people more flexibility to not have to work with their okay. their primary care doctor. Is there is there a chance that we can re refuse the decision or the suggestion <gasps> yes. from the? Hmm? You can. What will happen if we refuse the suggestion from the? Well, if you have a good relationship with your doctor, which hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you know, you can have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and get a different recommendation, um, but if, if ultimately they won't refer you, mm -hmm. you can make a decision to go, but then you may have to cover that, um, personally. yes, personally, okay. um, which, so you want to be careful <laughs> with that. You can, you can switch your primary doctor, so if you're unhappy oh. with them, un but it does, if um, you need a t care urgently, you wouldn't do that, but if you're frustrated, you can make a change, and then you just get a new doctor, and then you try again with their <laughs> recommendations. Ms. Kendra, I'm curious about the referral procedure. Um, does the social insurance have the same procedure with when we refer a patient? Yeah, it's a good question. They do. So our social insurance is managed out of um, our Department of Health and Human Services. So they as well have a system where you have to call and sort of get approval when you're going to seek mm -hmm. care. And they make recommendations to who will accept Medicare and they'll tell you that because not all facilities do. Mm -hmm. And Medicare mm -hmm. sometimes doesn't cover everything. So, um, you know, for instance, my mom is, uh, is she receives cancer treatment mm -hmm. and and so she also has like additional uh, care and treatment for Medicare. So they have specialists that will help you determine how much Medicare is going to support and then how much you would have to pay out of another insurance. So you always start with calling, um, but that is actually run by the government. So they'll have specialists from HHS that help you. Yeah. No, since 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 I'm, I'm because you're talking about your mama, yeah. I'm also an elderly people. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so when uh, 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 when an American is still working in a company yes. or in the so he or she will be covered by that special. Yes. Insurance, yes, it's not a social insurance, isn't it? No, it's no? A, yeah, it's it, the law that if you're yeah. working full time, your company has to offer okay. you insurance. Then, after he or she yes. retired, yes, then she will, she will, she will uh, cater by the Medicare or Medicaid, yeah, is that correct? Yes, it is correct. Yeah. So, so uh, otherwise, he, he or she might pay another extra for a yes. for private insurance as well, yeah, so, so that is. That is the system. Is that it? is the system. Okay. Sometimes for some companies, you may mm. have a pension that mm. includes mm. some medical insurance mm. uh, in the government. This is the case yeah. that will get coverage. You know, so at a certain point, if you work a certain years in government, your your pension plan includes you know some medical. Yeah. Um, uh, it's the law after somebody stops working that for one year you're okay. covered. Yeah. Well, you look for another job, but then yes, when you retire, there's just a narrow window, and then you have to shift to to medical. Just for your information, for me, yeah. in Indonesian civil service. After retire, we will cover the whole until we die. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good system. Yeah, for government employees. So. <laughs> that's very nice. So talking about that primary physician yeah. that you you mentioned, yeah. because here there is a system of you you know about the system of BPJS. Oh yes. And we have that that primary physician is the the the, the doctor in the puskesmas. Yes. But in your case, it's not like that, isn't yeah. it? No. Th that primary who is who is that primary? Yeah. So the insurance always have a list of doctors and you pick a primary care, mm. usually somebody that lives close to you or that somebody's recommended. And, or and he or she has his own clinic. Yeah, or they work, uh, sometimes they work in many places. Um, oh, okay. You know, so sometimes if you want to visit your primary care doctor, mm -hmm. uh, they may work in a hospital like two days a week at one hospital, two oh. days a week at oh. another hospital. Okay. Okay. Some of them have their own. Uh, so there's a variety of options. Mm -hmm. But I think it's becoming more normal now that doctors are working at many sites to, so that they can see different patients. So they work in a couple hospitals. So this in this university, we just opened what we call a specialist of primary 
primary care and family medicine, oh, something really? like that. Yeah. So it's, it's rel relatively new in Indonesia. So is there any specific, uh, uh, specific, I mean, criteria for a person to be a primary physician, or any any yeah. doctor can can do? No, I think uh, it is a specialty within mm. the doctor, a primary care physician, or you okay. become a specialized doctor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If I may continue this one, yes. you know, I I told you that my my daughter is in New York. Yes. So when before she went there, yeah, we uh, she performed a mammography here. Oh yes. And then the doctor here in Jakarta said you have to to do the same mammographies three months after you. Oh yeah. Uh, then there's a problem of this one. Oh no! Why? Because when he got his her health insurance, yeah, he has a, her primary physician. So there are two interpretation. Oh. Most mammography is covered. Oh yeah. Or mammography is not covered. Oh, <laughs> those are very different <laughs> yeah. interpretations. Yeah, yeah, because there's one said no. Be because if you have complaint, right. but if it is a routine process, yes. it is not covered. Yes. So she asked, do you have a complaint? She said, not, because I just had mammography in my hometown because for a routine. Yeah. So, so how about check up then? then? Is it covered by... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question. So mm -hmm. what happens with a lot of preventive services mm -hmm. is they give you the, like your dental, you can do cleaning once a year. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go beyond that, you pay. If you mammogram, you do it, you know, once a year, if that's what's recommended, you're paid. Oh, uh, okay. And then the only way they'll pay for follow-up is if your doctor says very clearly they refer you for additional, you know, mammogram, mm -hmm. then your insurance could pay it. Mm -hmm. But there's always just a limit to what you know your baseline preventive services are once you exceed that you need to have a doctor's referral mm -hmm. um, a reason <laughs> that, that the insurance will pay for it so that's that's um it's a benefit in that it includes the preventive services okay. but it's also kind of restrictive because there's limits to those and then you how, have how to about go, immunization yeah vaccination yeah it, you know it's covered for certain vaccines uh -huh. what, what, I, what we've come to learn because my husband and i like to travel is that when you travel uh -huh. a lot of the vaccines that aren't needed in the u.s we have to pay out of pocket for <laughs> but oh, uh, okay. you know if you or if you want something specialized like rabies but things influenza vaccine free covid vaccines are free meningitis you know free. all of the childhood uh, the required vaccines are free of charge okay and oh. actually vaccines are, are it's, a, it's a, are quite easy to get in the u.s we often get our vaccinations in a grocery store mm. That's how yes i, I know, know. <laughs> i know yeah. yeah thank you miss kendra yeah. <laughs> so uh uh you told you told us uh, that uh, there are a lot of kind hospitals yeah. uh, in the united states can you break down for us the, the kind of the hospital in the united states yeah, I don't know that I know the categories like, you know, that officially we, we monitor because I, I don't um, work on domestic issues. But I do know that, um, you know, all the pro hospitals are in the private sector, with the exception of our veterinary um, hospitals for veterans. Um, and, you, you know, it, it really often the hospitals range in size from whether you're living in urban areas to whether you're living in rural areas where the hospitals can be quite small. And so and whether they're specialized hospitals, like a lot of times a children's hospital is a separate hospital than the hospital where adults go. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, mainly we have hospitals and then specialized services, and then they're often, if you want to seek, there are smaller yeah. doctor's yeah. clinics if people like personal care. There's even been a trend for home care recently. It's quite expensive, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if you want a doctor to come to your house, mm -hmm. you have that option. Okay. Um, and then there's urgent cares are very uh, prevalent and emergency rooms are, you know, are, um, depending, more available in urban areas. Okay. And, and so some people but, in rural well, areas have all that. Kind of, all kind of hospitals. All kind of hospitals, all different. Can, can cover the, the uh, uh, insurance or the yes. insurance. Yes, uh, exactly. Patient. Yes. Okay. Yeah, depending. I mean, mm -hmm. some hospitals may not accept some types of insurance. And there are some insurance, like you may have heard of Kaiser, mm -hmm. where they only support their facilities. So mm -hmm. Kaiser has medical facilities, and you cannot go outside of a Kaiser facility. Mm -hmm. If it's an emergency, they'll cover some. But if you're just doing routine services, you have to go to their medical facilities. Mm -hmm. So there are some insurance focus on their own facilities. Oh. Yeah. Uh, here in Indonesia, yeah. um, as we know, uh, uh, beside uh, for paying the paying the hospital uh, yeah. treatment, uh, some kind of people are getting the insurance to 
uh, get a finance, financial benefit oh, uh, yeah. from the uh, insurance that they have. Oh, right, right? So in Indonesia, we have a, uh, we, call, we call it COB, oh, Coordination okay. of Benefit, that can, we can combine. Ah, we can combine nice. the uh, benefit of our social insurance or yeah. our government uh, uh, insurance oh, yeah. with our private uh, insurance okay. if we have. If yeah. we have. Uh, is there any kind of uh, type of insurance there in the United States. Yeah, so you can have additional mm -hmm. insurance if you mm -hmm. want in the United mm -hmm. States. They often ask you that when you're getting it for your company if you're going to purchase other insurance. Yeah. <laughs> they sort of know, mm -hmm. uh, you know how to mm -hmm. calculate your benefits. But I think the best example is you know, for people that retire when they're on Medicare, yeah. they may have supplemental insurance and then yeah. that's sort of right. like a more package of benefits, however mm -hmm. you pay uh, for, mm -hmm. for the, the extra insurance. Should be exactly. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So basically for the p people who are still working, yes. that, that, that uh, insurance paid by their employer. Yes. So it, it will cover everything. I mean, the, the yeah. one, one of the issue of the yeah. COB is mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. some, some uh, treatment yeah. will not be covered by the yeah. quote unquote social or yeah. the PJS. Yeah. So, so that's why there, there is needed an yeah. edit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same in America. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we'd like to think most things are covered, but okay. it, it, the reality is that there are services that your medical insurance either won't fully cover or mm -hmm. will only cover, say, 75%, mm -hmm. 80%. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, people get catastrophic coverage, we mm -hmm. call it, so that you don't end up with hundreds of thousands of dollars in mm. medical bills that, that those types of things are covered under mm. your insurance. Um, but you know, for some more, you know, um, basic services, sometimes they're, you know, depending on what you want, if you want, uh, there are tests um, mm. and things like, I'm trying to think of an example, like an MRI. Mm -hmm. If you needed that, if the doctor recommends it, you know, oftentimes it'll be covered 100%. If it's not critical, uh, then the insurance will check whether it's an approved procedure or not. You may have to pay 20%. Mm. So, you know, his first question is, how do you choose the insurance yeah. and you said that if you're working in this particular company so the yeah. company basically yeah. will have already insurance and you yeah. will follow that you, yeah yes yeah. so how many uh, not how many but so i'm sure there are so many insurance yeah. company yeah. there in the states that yes. that company can choose isn't it it is so it could that's it's very daunting sometimes yeah. to pick your insurance mm -hmm. uh, what we see now a lot is that companies don't offer you endless choices you maybe have if you're lucky mm -hmm. five or six choices some companies only one uh, okay. so your choice is usually narrow by what your employer mm -hmm. decides to use and sometimes mm -hmm. people have left companies if they're really upset oh, with their I insurance see. Or, you know, alternatively, you can use your spouse's, you know, insurance. So if you have somebody that's working and they can add you to their insurance. So um, a lot of times if you're, you have choices between your own or your spouse's and you pick which insurance is going to mm -hmm. work better. Mm -hmm. um, but usually adding family members to your insurance, you'd have to pay a little bit extra to your, mm -hmm. in addition to your so is it So sometimes yeah. people even leave the, comp the office because yeah. of the oh, yeah, insurance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, it could be a lot for a company if they they make a change to an insurance okay. and it's unpopular. Mm -hmm. um, we've had the issue with the U.S. government too. Sometimes they've dropped certain insurances and people get really upset okay. and complain to the unions that mm -hmm. we want it back. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Kent, uh, Ms. Kendra, uh, would you like to share your experience when you get treatment in America? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think as, as um, you know, we, we talk through a bit uh, normally for, I, I, Fortunately, I feel like I've been lucky and pretty healthy that a lot of my experience has been more on preventive care of just scheduling appointments with my doctor, you know, starting with calling my primary care physician, scheduling like an annual checkup or a mammogram or, you know, going to... So if, if you call primary, your primary physician, is it... Now you call, you can get, you can see it tomorrow or? Well, that's a, yeah, yeah. it depends on the services. Okay. Primary care, usually within, you know, a week or so. Okay. Specialized services like a mammogram sometimes uh -huh. now can take, you know, a few weeks. So you need to have good planning. Okay. Um, if it's urgent, they'll prioritize you for going in quickly. Mm. When they're just routine services, sometimes they want you to plan a month or two in advance. That way, mm. <laughs> that way they free up time for people that are mm. having emergency situations. Um, but some, they're, for a while, 
while, we actually had a very limited number of gynecologists uh, globally, uh, across the America. It was becoming a big problem because people were getting months and months and months to just have routine services. So I think sometimes, mm. depending on where you live, uh, DC is pretty crowded. You know, it can be quite competitive to get appointments in Washington, D.C. Yeah, so some pre-planning takes some some time to make sure that you can get an appointment when it works for you. Um, And then, you know, I've had experiences with going into the urgent care, like with with my mother, and, uh, you know, normally those have been, uh, you know, pretty pleasant experiences where you wait, you know, we have to wait in the waiting room for a little bit, uh, then a doctor will see you, and then, you know, the next day you call your primary care doctor and tell them, I've been to the emergency room. (laughs) Um, I think I think one of the challenges in, in, in the U.S. Uh, is sometimes your uh, patient information. We have a lot of patient medical privacy acts, so sometimes it's hard to get your own information. So if you seek services outside of referrals, uh, it, you have to make sure that they transfer your medical records, mm-hmm. and a lot of that work falls on you to call and make sure that you give them the contact and they send the the um, documents over. So I think that is something that uh, we, is still a challenge in the U.S. is making sure that your comprehensive medical history is mm-hmm. all in one place when you're going to different. And um, and you have to sign a lot of paperwork to yeah. get your own medical information because of medical privacy acts. So I, 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 I mean, we know that in some countries, I'm not talking yeah. about U.S., but some other countries, the waiting time yeah. for certain kind of surgery could be months yeah yes so i mean so that yeah so people get frustrated so yeah or even some dentistry yeah feeling could be you have to wait it's true yeah, yeah it's so. true uh, i think it's so dependent across uh, america i mm. think in rural areas we have a, a tremendous problems because we don't have enough health care facilities okay. and specialized services usually if you're living in an urban area or big city um mm. you know you can get services pretty quickly okay. you know particularly if it's um if it's an emergency mm. but it's definitely a, a big challenge for people that are living in rural areas and they don't have access to mm. the medical care there's very few uh, services particularly specialized so they either have to travel very far or they have to wait months for services it's, mm. it's a little bit it's a it's a bit of a problem that I think um, we're tr- trying to incentivize more like doctors going to work in rural areas to address mm. this gap of like um, as you know medical school is very expensive in the US too so often uh, there's programs now to forgive loans if people go work in rural areas because there is a special special yeah loan forgiveness because we really need to get doctors to rural areas so people don't okay. have to wait long for services. So that's a, that's a good good point to be to yeah. inform our minister of health <laughs> to <laughs> give specific <laughs> loans for Indonesian yeah. doctor health. Yes. <laughs> I think that the challenge is sometimes people move to the rural areas for the number of years the doctors need to pay back the service time and then they go to an urban area uh-huh. again. But. Okay, <laughs> this has been such a, a, a wonderful and in, in, insightful conversation, actually. Oh, but nggak terasa. Maybe maybe this is our last question. Okay. Maybe uh, b- last time before Dr. Prof. Chandra told us that you have uh, been uh, get an experience yes. for having the uh, uh, treatment in Indonesia. Yes. So maybe would you mind sharing for us? Sure. Maybe. <laughs> Difference between yeah. America and yeah. Maybe it can be our positive uh, insight. Or yeah. <laughs> well, I think overall it was a, it was a very good experience. Mm-hmm. But yes, I, I um, when I was here, unfortunately, sort of unexpectedly in the middle of a work day, uh, I had a miscarriage and had to mm-hmm. get. Mm-hmm rushed to the hospital, although there was a lot of traffic, so rushing was very, <laughs> was very slow. Um, uh, and when we got there, the, the medical services were wonderful, and the staff was wonderful, but, you know, it was a long day because, you know, it happened sort of late in the day. It was in the wee hours of the morning. My husband had raced over to the hospital to be with me. So when we were all done, and they were releasing me maybe 2 in the morning, I didn't have to stay overnight, and I thought, oh, I'm so excited to go home. And then they said, no, wait, you have to pay first. <laughs> And my husband went to reach for his wallet and realized in mm-hmm. the chaos, 
And so we said, we'll just pay you later. You know, we, we live here and here's our address and here's our work. We work for the U.S. Embassy. We'll pay you later. No, you need to pay us cash. <laughs> so my <laughs> husband had to drive home and get the wallet and come back. And we paid for the medical services. And I felt like I stayed hostage. But they, I mean, they were very <laughs> lovely to me, fed me, gave me food. But, but it was a funny experience because in the U.S. you would just leave. Mm -hmm. And then later they send a bill. But here we were so surprised when they wouldn't let us leave that I was ready to go home. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ms. <laughs> so maybe from a white point of view, is there any uh, positive uh, <coughs> or positive suggestion from you based on your experience? Yeah. From ha having a treatment in, in Indonesia. Not, not only having a treatment, because mm -hmm. she works here for five yeah. years in the I mean, mm -hmm. supporting our Ministry of Health. So she oh, has okay. some, you know, yeah. uh, uh, insight in, the, in that sense, as well as a personal. Yeah, yeah. so if you could kindly. Yeah. Personally, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, I think every country, that, especially mm -hmm. that have large populations, Asia and the U.S., you know, mm -hmm. we struggle with giving effective and affordable health care to everyone. I think there's some wonderful aspects of Indonesia's mm -hmm. health care. I mean, you have universal health care coverage now. Mm -hmm. The workforce is amazing. I'd say the difference we often talk about as Americans from, like, the services you get in Indonesia and other parts of Asia are just very friendly, supportive um, a care in, in an environment, whereas U.S. Is, can be very sterile and sort of uh, feel very informal, the relationships. It's very business-like. Doctors have little time to spend with you. The turnover when your appointments are quickly, are quick. Uh, the nurses are always rushing off to other things. And so I think people feel sometimes here in Indonesia that the services are a little more warm and you know supportive and, and welcoming. And I think that's something that America has to, has to learn. I think people could sometimes be shocked of their experience of like being a very business uh, rush 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 get out oh, that's good yeah. <laughs> because usually people said that here yeah the doctors are like that oh, yeah. <laughs> no but with, with an eastern way yeah, that's true. <laughs> with an eastern way <laughs> okay so very very thank you no uh, before, before, before we end so even though the discussion is about the the hospital yeah. mm -hmm. And your personal experience yeah. since you are here yeah. if you could kindly share a little bit about, about usa oh, yeah. in general and then so 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 people our <laughs> rc viewer can can get oh, okay. and yeah well, please thank you. yeah so uh, usa is the uh, u.s agency for international development and mm -hmm. we're the u.s's largest uh, area of, of uh, development assistance mm -hmm. uh, overseas focused on areas of health, mm -hmm. which is one of our largest uh, support areas, but also education, democracy and governance, economic growth, mm -hmm. and humanitarian assistance. For instance, we did a lot of work here during the tsunami, teams that uh, re help respond to national natural disasters. Um, within our health program, we focus on infectious diseases such mm -hmm. as TB, uh, zoonotic diseases mm -hmm. to prevent, this is where uh, D.D. Chandra and I got to work very closely <laughs> together during avian influenza, mm -hmm. uh, neglected tropical diseases, HIV, uh, and then we have a large focus on maternal and child health and, and nutrition. Um, but in Indonesia, we've had this really great partnership because uh, you're, the, the capacity here is so great that we've been helping with uh, financing, health financing, uh, universal health care coverage, health system strengthening. Uh, so yeah, our support is really just to help countries, uh, you know, sort of um, advance uh, the, their health <laughs> for, of the people so it's it's a great partnership and you know we've been we were established under president kennedy mm -hmm. uh, and you know we continue to be one of the largest development assistance organizations and um, we've been in indonesia i think it's, it's we're celebrating our 75th year <laughs> so it's been a what? long-standing partnership so, yeah, yeah so it's uh yeah we've been really happy to be part of the you know community so here that is about health yeah. since we are talk we are discussion in yeah. the university yeah. how about in education yeah. Uh, so it if, is, even though it's not your under yeah. your jurisdiction, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have to, it, it, we um, <coughs> largely have shifted our education focus in many countries to primary education. And oh, okay. Really basic so not the university. Yeah. yeah, we do have some university I'm partnerships. I'm hoping that USA can teacher. support us <laughs> <Yassi> basically. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But we do through health engage universities. So uh, Sorry? I, within our different technical programs. Okay. So for instance, in health, we do a lot of partnerships with, mm. with universities. Mm -hmm. um, but our impact for our education program, we have a little bit of partnerships here in secondary education and universities. But more of our university partnerships are okay. now through environment, through health. So mm -hmm. there's opportunities. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
What a great conversation, actually. Right? Thank you. It's a facilitator, <laughs> my two amazing people. Uh, it's a you kind of podcast, in, insightful uh, <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Maybe Dr. Gina. Uh, udah 30 menit. Mm-hmm. Kalau saya mau nambah boleh. Sudah cukup So 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 let's mm-hmm. let, let, yeah we are talking about the closing statement. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, the discussion is about closing <laughs> statement. Figured, yes, so for me, yeah. of course, <laughs> as as on behalf of Yarsi University, we would like to yes. thank you Thank for you. coming here yeah. in in relatively short notice, yeah. just just a post up message. So uh, your your and you share your your uh, views on the, on the healthcare and the hospital. Uh, so thank you very much and for us this is also new this is, this is uh, a new new event that we invite uh, people from abroad coming to the university and interview directly by the student itself so yeah. so this is a new setting that we have so mm-hmm. thank you very much for you and then 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 and for all of you has to know that she will end his uh, her term in Jakarta mm-hmm. I think for the next one or two weeks and after oh. that she will enjoy Uh, Danu Toba as wow. well as as well as Sabang. Yes. Yeah, as well as Sabang. So so, have a, thank you and have, have a nice holiday. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Terima kasih. Thanks for hosting me. Terima kasih. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> thank you, uh, Miss Kendra, Prof Chandra, for coming to our podcast yeah. and for our listener. Maybe if you have any question, you can leave your question in our comment. <laughs> The comment below. <laughs> so saya kembalikan ke Dr. Gina. Silakan Dr. Gina. Oke, okay, banyak Dr. Evan. Terima kasih. Tidak terasa ya kita udah ngebahas dari hal asuransi, kemudian ketika dirawat di rumah sakit, benar-benar hal yang sebenarnya agak-agak hampir sama ya Prof ya hmm. dengan Indonesia. Cuma mungkin di sana lebih ke preventif ya lebih dalam. Uh, baik, uh, sekian dari podcast kali ini. Sampai bertemu di episode selanjutnya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Halo.